beauty and complexity. We have vast oceans and incredible weather. Giant mountains and astonishing landscapes. But even the rich variety found here on our planet cannot prepare us for what lies beyond Earth. Because what we now know about the solar system is simply astounding. We are living in the greatest age of discovery our civilization has known. The planets and moons of the solar system are no longer mysterious dots in the night sky. They are worlds we have visited. Worlds we have touched. Worlds we have photographed. We have discovered these places to be worlds more beautiful, more violent, and more fascinating than we ever imagined. What makes these wonders even more astonishing is that they were carved out of nothing more than a random, chaotic cloud of gas. How the structures and patterns of the solar system emerge from the chaos of space is one of its great mysteries. In solving that mystery, we will uncover two of the wonders of the solar system. And we'll also need to get to grips with the fundamental forces that control the universe. And see how those forces were unleashed in the early solar system. Oh my God, it's bad. That's gonna be violent. We need to understand how we fit into our cosmic surroundings. And how the movement of the planets and their moons have built the ordered solar system we live in. Because the story of the solar system is the story of the creation of order out of chaos. And ultimately reveals why we are here. Understanding our place in the solar system is a journey of discovery we have been on since people first looked into the night sky. These are the Atlas Mountains in North Africa. According to Roman legend, they held the heavens above the Earth. And here, far away from city lights, it's easy to appreciate the effect that the night sky would have had on ancient civilizations. Look up into a dark night, and you'll see billions of stars randomly scattered across a vista of infinite chaos. But keep watching for a while, and a pattern appears to emerge. It looks as though the sky is spinning above us. And it's because of this movement that for thousands of years, people thought that we were at the center of the universe. Intuitively, if you certainly look up at the night sky, you would probably reasonably assume that you knew nothing about the wider universe, that you were at the center of it, and that everything was moving around you. And it may be something about human ego, but I also think it's not a bad assumption. But there were some objects in the night sky that didn't behave as predictably as the stars. And here, in Duga, Tunisia, the Romans built temples to the gods they are named after. They were the planets. And they helped to change our view of the universe. The word planet comes from the Greek for wandering star, and they were given that name because they appeared to shift their position compared with the other stars. They didn't behave in quite the way the others did. Some of them, if you watch them over a period of time, 
okay to do this retrograde motion, where they reverse the motion and then go forward again. That's really hard to explain if you believe everything goes around the Earth. This is Mars. Photographed once a week over a period of months. You can see how it moves across the background of the stars. But it doesn't always go in a straight line. Sometimes Mars stops and changes direction before going on its way again. It did take a very long time to understand exactly what caused the planets to move in these apparently rather odd tracks across the night sky. But ultimately, the simple solution, and the one of course we're completely familiar with, is that the Earth is not at the center of the universe, but rather that we move around the sun along with the other planets. When you make that leap, it gets a lot easier to explain what's going on. By the 17th century, scientists understood that the Sun, and not the Earth, was at the centre of the solar system. And in our model, this represents the Earth, and this is Mars, and the planets, if you look down on the solar system, move around the Sun in anti-clockwise orbits. But the Earth is rather closer to the Sun than Mars is, and that means that it moves around more quickly. And sometimes, the Earth overtakes Mars. And when that happens, Mars appears to move backwards against the distant stars. And that's when we see that weird retrograde motion effect. As we overtake Mars on the inside, our view of it against the night sky makes it appear to move backwards. Until our relative positions switch once more, and Mars appears to move forwards again. Understanding that the Earth was not at the center of the universe, but instead orbited around the Sun, gave new meaning to the patterns in the sky and the rhythms that govern all of our lives. We have cycles of night and day because the Earth turns on its axis every 24 hours. A year is the time it takes the Earth to complete an orbit of the Sun. And here, seen from the perspective of the sun, we can see how the seasons change. The earth is tilted on its axis, and as it leans towards the sun, it brings the summer to the southern hemisphere. And then as it tilts again, to the northern hemisphere. As the seasons pass, landscapes are transformed. Weather changes. And life comes and goes. All driven by the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. But it's not just the Earth. The whole solar system is full of those rhythms. Each planet orbits the Sun in its own distinctive way. Mercury is the fastest because it's the closest to the Sun, reaching speeds of up to 200,000 kilometers an hour. It takes just 88 days to complete each orbit. Venus rotates incredibly slowly. It takes longer to spin on its axis than it does to orbit the Sun, which means on Venus, a day is longer than a year. Further out, the planets travel more slowly. Jupiter, the largest planet, takes 12 Earth years to make its journey around the Sun. And at the very farthest reaches of the solar system, four and a half billion kilometers from the Sun, Neptune orbits so slowly that it hasn't even completed a single lap since it was discovered in 1846. The whole solar system could be run by clockwork. But why is the solar system so ordered? And how did that order come into existence? The clue lies in the sweeping circular motions of the planets. The forces responsible for these patterns can be found at work on Earth. 